Hey everyone. So we're going to start talking about Newton's laws of motion and forces. I didn't want to approach it in the standard way because I believe that can be kind of confusing. Uh, I'm going to try a different route. Uh, let me know what you think. Um, but let's get started. Uh, we're, today we're going to talk about momentum and its derivative. So momentum is a vector and it's equal to the mass times the velocity vector. So it's equal to mass times velocity. So it's it's the quantity and Newton said that uh, reason that this is the best way to measure an object's quantity of motion. I think to some level it makes a decent amount of sense. For instance, let's say on this side you have an elephant and it's charging at you at speed v and on this side you have a bunny and it's hopping at you at this speed v or charging at you at speed v for whatever reason and you're sitting here and you're looking at the elephant which has a mass m and you're looking at the bunny which has a little mass m and obviously you just know that the elephant is much more massive than the bunny and they're both charging at you now they both have the same speed and up till now you've learned about different speeds and such you know how to talk about them so if these were particles physically up till now you would have no way to differentiate them other than their directions right you you wouldn't have already con you wouldn't have considered yet what mass they had so you're standing here and you consider, hmm, let's say I could put a wall right where I am. I am a wall. Which one, if I'm standing here and these objects are coming at me, charging at me, which one do, requires me to, in a sense, push harder to stop it? Well, you're going to just know from intuition, from common sense, it's going to be the elephant. It's going to be much harder to stop the elephant. This is kind of what is meant by quantity of motion. This, and it makes sense. You have some speed you're going, and you contain some mass m. That we call momentum. All right, so we know what momentum is. You start off with zero velocity. You have no momentum. There's no quantity of motion. Uh, as you start moving, you acquire a quantity of motion, which is a uh, proportional to your mass. So you multiply by your mass and that gives you your uh, quantity of motion. Now that can change. And we're at, what we want to know is what does it mean when it does change? When the quantity of motion changes with respect to time, what is that? So first we're going to assume that m is constant. Most of the time it's close enough to being constant that we can call it a constant. And so here we go. So we're going to take the derivative of momentum with respect to time. And that's going to be equal to the derivative of the mass times the velocity with respect to time. Mass is constant, so we can pull that out. And we get m times dv dt. But dv dt is equal to a right we learned that in previous videos that the derivative of the velocity vector is equal to the acceleration vector so what that means is we can write do this in a different color we can write dp dt is equal to m times a so the change in momentum with respect to time is equal to mass times acceleration. If dp dt is zero, what does that mean? If, D, if dp dt is zero, then zero is mass times acceleration. You know, m is probably not zero in this case, otherwise you don't have an object. So you uh, your acceleration must be zero. 
And if your acceleration is equal to zero, then dv dt is equal to zero, because that is acceleration, which means velocity isn't changing. So if you have no change in momentum, you have no change in velocity. All right, so we learned about momentum, and we found that when we take the derivative or find how it changes with time, we find that that's equal to mass times acceleration. That basically led to the conclusion that when dp, d, dp dt is not equal to zero, a change in motion occurred, right? So when dp dt is not equal to zero, a change in motion occurred. So let's say you're in space, there's a particle going down just one dimension line, just traveling in a line. Nothing around you for eternity. It's just just the particle. And just imagine it in your brain, and it's just moving along this line. And then all of a sudden, you notice that its momentum changes, or its, its uh, direction and its uh, magnitude, one or the other, or maybe both. But something about it changed. Now, you know from experience in your normal life that th rocks don't just jump up on the counters. People pick them up and put them there. You have to apply a force to something to move it. So if this is just going along at some velocity v1, and then you know, let's say this is time equals t1, and then at some other point, time equals t2, the velocity is different, big or smaller, doesn't matter but it just has a different velocity. It could even be on a different trajectory or a different course now. But the idea is it changed. And we know from experience that something had to make it change. And on top of that, I could lightly push it. I could shove it. I could hit it with a bat. I could apply a different amount of, in a sense, uh, force on that object. So this is kind of like the big idea of all this is forces cause change in motion so just think about that force causes change in motion alright so we found that taking the derivative of momentum is equal to mass times acceleration and if you think about it if that if that if the momentum is changing an object's motion just changed and we know from everyday experience that must mean a force was applied to it we'll call it a force something happened to it we do know that how much uh, what's that how can we measure that force well that's gonna be exactly the change in momentum with respect to time that lets us measure the force that was applied to the object so if that object underwent some sort of acceleration and has a certain mass that tells you basically how hard you had to push that object thinking about the units of this force now first I want to make a distinction net is basically just saying add up all the forces in all the different directions and uh, the net is the result of that of adding all those forces Mass, we'll put in units of kilogram and acceleration, meters per second squared. So kilograms, meters per second squared, and we call that a newton. A newton is equal to a kilogram mass times meters per second squared acceleration. That's a newton. Momentum is how we found this, uh, this idea. We didn't know to call it a newton, but when we found ma, we found newton, didn't we? When we took the derivative of momentum with respect to time and got ma, if we plugged in our units, they would have been identical to the Newton. So we were starting to talk about force already. So momentum is talking about a quantity of motion and forces cause changes in motion. So if you want to know about forces, you take the derivative of momentum with respect to time and you find the f net force, which is equal to mass times acceleration, or you'll find what caused the change in motion uh, of that object. All right, so 
At the beginning, when we took the derivative of momentum with respect to time, we assumed something. We assumed mass was constant. That's not always the case. Uh, in an introductory physics course, F net equals MA is completely acceptable because you're not dealing with anything that uh, mass is changing in any sort of significant proportion. In other words, DMT is virtually zero. But what if you were dealing with something where DMT wasn't virtually zero, where it actually may make a difference? Well, let's, let's go and take that derivative again, but this time we're not going to assume that M is constant. So we have P is equal to MV. Now if I take the derivative with respect to time of both sides, I have dp dt is equal to, now when you take the derivative, I'll write it like this first, d m v dt, but we have to use the product rule because we have two variables. So what we'll end up getting is uh, dp dt is equal to the first m times the derivative of the second, the derivative of velocity is a, the acceleration, plus the derivative of the first times the second, so v times the derivative of m, which is dm dt. Hmm. So this, if db dt is equal to dp dt is equal to f net, the net force applied to an object, then f net would actually be equal to mass times acceleration plus this component, the velocity times the change in mass with respect to time, the rate at which the mass changes. So this is actually uh, the derivative of momentum, but for all the physics in your in an elementary or introductory college level course, even calc based, uh, F net equals MA is completely acceptable uh, because you don't you're not going to deal with any any systems where the DMDT is going to make any sort of difference. For instance, if DMDT is practically zero, then this term down here, D V DMDT, would be approximately zero as well. But anyway. Uh, thanks for watching the video. Um, I'll have some more coming out soon, but let me know what you think of this approach, and I hope I've helped.